Welcome back everyone to episode 5 of my Link to the Past long play. In the previous episode we went into the first of the seven, I believe it's seven caves or, or dungeons you have to complete in the Dark World in order to gain the ability to break Ganon's uh, cave entrance or whatever. Go back to the pyramid in the Dark World and get the uh, the final battle. Fight, fight the final battle. Whatever I'm trying to say. Anyway, we've gotten a hammer, and the hammer's going to allow us to do a whole bunch of things that we wanted to do in the Dark World that we couldn't before, simply because we were gated from accessing them. And I probably shouldn't have left the map because I needed to go into the portal. Oh, well, we're off to a rip-roaring start. Here we go. All right. Whoa! Hey, that fireball is not supposed to follow me. There's Link taking giant gulps of water as he swims. That's probably really unsafe. We have a couple of things that we want to do at the very outset of this particular episode. First thing we want to do is we want to go pick up a pretty critical item for traversing the world. I believe it works in both the light and dark world, but I guess we'll find out in just a second here. We're going to go up here. I think this is a shop now. It is sort of. 100 rupees for 30 bombs, 30 bombs for just 100 rupees. Please buy them. Now, what we need to do here, and we won't be able to do this for a while, is we'll come back to him, and he'll actually sell a very big bomb. And you can use that to blow open a couple of areas of the map, particularly to the north where the pyramid is. We can't do anything with it yet. I say pyramid, I guess technically based on the design, it's more of a ziggurat. Isn't that how you say it? The the more ancient, like, uh, I'm probably going to botch which ones did it. The Aztec or Mayan, Incan, whatever they were. The, the pyramids that had, like, uh, levels on the outside. It's more, it, the design is more akin to that than a traditional pyramid from, like, Egypt. So we need to get here for two things. First thing is we can go back to the light world right here to get an item. And teleport back real quick. And go in here and there's a heart piece. And then we want to go back to the Dark World. And we want to go north. Get out of here. Ah, oh, of course. Should be using the boomerang more. My folly in this playthrough is lack of use of the incredibly useful boomerang. Uh, we mentioned this before, that these trees, as you can see... Wow! I haven't seen a normal person in a few hundred years. Let me talk to you for a while. Once, I once lived in the Lost Woods until the day I wandered into a magical transporter. The power of the Dark World quickly turned me into this tree shape. I guess the two forests are connected with each other. Okay, so I guess you can't pull them. I thought you could, but... Obviously, they... There we go. Quit bothering me. Watch where you're going when you dash around. You mean like this? <laughs> okay, so you can talk to them, but you can't necessarily get anything by pulling on their nose. Now, this is where we found the boy playing the flute earlier, and unfortunately, he's also here in the Dark World. 
after wandering into this world, I turned into this shape. I enjoyed playing the flute in the original world. There was a small grove where many animals gathered. I want to see that place again. I buried my flute there with some flower seeds. Will you try to find it for me? Yes. Then I will lend you my shovel. Good luck. You borrowed a shovel. You can dig in many places. You'll never know what you'll find. So we will go here. I'm going to flip back right here. I don't think we'll get caught. Yeah, good. Because if you do it too close to where he plays the flute normally, it'll actually get you uh, stuck in place and you'll actually go back to the dark world immediately. Yeah, because I can't move while he's playing it. Now, you could literally spend all day digging through holes, but I'm fairly certain it's in this group of plants right here. There it is. Oh, here is the flute. Its music surely has some mysterious power. And, oh, oh, come on. Unfortunately, it takes a slot of your shovel, so you don't get to keep that item. Would have been nice if you had been allowed to hold on to both the flute and the shovel, but... Now I gotta go back and quote unquote return the shovel since he let you borrow it and then play the flute for him. And if it wasn't obvious before, he's slowly turning into a tree. Thank you, Lunk, but it looks like I can't play my flute anymore. Please take it. If by chance you go to the village I lived in, please give it to a tired old man you will find there. Well, my mind is getting hazy. Please let me hear the sound of the flute one last time. Let's go ahead and play it for him. That's sad. Now, obviously, if you are familiar with the game that comes immediately after this, at least release-wise, which was the Ocarina of Time, this flute, quotey fingers, that I'm using right now looks very similar to the Ocarina. I don't think that was a mistake. I'm sure they thought that was a much more interesting design for a flute than what they'd used in the original game which was literally more like a flute or possibly even a recorder in design than uh, what we get in future games when you pick up a quote-unquote flute. It's actually just an ocarina. All right, let's go ahead and put that on and head this way. There's some stuff that we would be able to do up here if I had more money. I've already tapped out my cash reserves, so there's not a whole lot we can do here. There is a mini game right here, and if we had the cash, you go into his little area there, and you would actually be able to. Come on, there we go. Uh, play a mini game where you can dig up items with a shovel that he'll loan you. And there is a piece of heart that's hidden in the ground somewhere in there. It's always random. You can't know for certain where it's going to be at an, any given turn. You just have to luck into it. All right, we'll, we'll blow some cash here. Uh, this is just a mini game where you shoot the octopi in the background. Well, howdy, light wordle. Wor worlder. You look like a straight at shooter. Want to try skill in my shooting gallery? I'll give you five shots for 20 rupees. You're as sharp as I think you are. You stand to rake in the rupees. How about it, stranger? Yeah, we'll do it. Now watch me botch the hell out of this. I think I have to put on a bow to do it. Got one. Got two. Alright. Got three. Alright, hey, we're doing alright. Wait until the hand's clear. Ah, oh, I missed one! Let's see if we can get four out of them. Got four. All right, well. So, I made some money. I'll try one more time. See if we can do all five in one round. All right, let's do this one. Got it. Let's do... that ah, too early! I botched already. All right. 
Too early? Ah, uh, all right. Well, I think we broke even there. <laughs> All right, now we do need to get back to the light world, and I think we can do that here. Yep, all right, that's good. We'll come back to that portal. Now, if I'm not mistaken, if you wander far enough away from there and you forget where the portal was when you first came back to the Light World, if you look at the map, I think it's on there. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, if you need to go back in the exact one you created, the game will actually kind of clue you into where you need to go. Just kind of give you a little gentle nudge and say, no, 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 go this way. This way. Alright, so now we can do something that is going to be very critical for the rest of the playthrough, which is right here. I'm going to take this, womp the little mallet on the, the peg there. Don't need that, but we'll take it. And then we want to swap to the magic powder and drop in here. Now, when I was a kid, I actually avoided doing this because the game made what happens very confusing. And we'll show it in a second here. Hey, bless you for waking me up from my deep dark sleep. I mean, thanks a lot, sir. But now I will get my revenge on you. Get ready for it. Er, is that okay with you, sir? So he'll zap you. And then that'll say... Hey, 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 I laugh at your misfortune. Now your magic power will drop by one and a half. Congratulations. I do your best, even though I'm sure it won't be enough. Have a nice day. See you. So I thought it was legitimately making it so that your magic reserve was half. What happens, and boy were, was that very confusing, is that he actually made it so that you use half as much magic power when you use an item that you normally would. Does that actually make the game much, much easier? No, but it does make it so that certain things like the ice rod or certain other magic using items like the medallions, you can use more frequently. It does not affect the power of those items. It simply makes it easier to use them or cheaper to use them for your magic reserves. But the way that the game words it is so confusing, it actually sounds like it's a bad thing and you shouldn't do it. I really wish they had not tried to be so uh, ambiguous about the effect of using it. I think that was pretty poorly handled on their part. Is this the guy? Not a chance to trim that? No. Well, maybe it is this guy. No, 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 I'm looking for the one that's asleep. Uh, which I think is here, maybe? In the bar? This guy. Yep, alright, so let's put the flute on. And play it for him. Oh, this is my son's flute. Did you meet my son? Where is he? Is he alright? Oh, I see. Well, I can't... I can tell you what you want to say by the look in your eyes. But you keep the flute, and will you play its sweet melody for the bird in the village square? I beg of you, please. My son would probably want it this way, but still, I wish I could see him once more. Well, you can. I'll just give you the mirror, and then you can go to the Dark World and see his dead, tree-like corpse now. <laughs> so it's very important that you come back and do what he said to the village square, where the bird is, right here, in the roundabout way that I did it, and play the flute.
And it turns into a duck! With yellow-tipped wings, which I don't know if I ever noticed that before. So what that did for me, besides freeing a duck from a statue, I don't know why it was there in the first place, is we now have the ability at our leisure to call that bird and have him pick us up and take us to any destination on the map from a selection of, I think, eight locations. So if we ever want to get to another part of the map very quickly, we have that option. Are we going to do it now? No, because I don't need to do it. Uh, I don't think there's anything else right away that we can do. At least nothing useful. There's going to be a few more areas of the map that we will be able to do some stuff in once we pick up more items that unlock traversal. In particular, I think the next cave has a pretty important traversal item in it. Next dungeon, whatever. So I want to go this way real quick. There is an item over here we can pick up. Catch. <laughs> catch. And catch. Right in there. Where those little hammer pegs are. We will flip back to this. Look at that, we're on top of this ledge now. And then we walk over here. There's another one of these, um, I don't know what to call them, steelies, probably. And you have to use the book to read it, obviously. Hold up the Master Sword and you will get the power of Bombos. And I don't think this one activates, but, oh, I guess it does. There you go. There we go. This is the Bombos Medallion. Its magic makes the ground explode with power. Watch, there's a magic meter. All right, and let's flop back to that. That's one of, uh, again, a whole selection of optional pieces of equipment that you'll never have to have, but they have some benefit in certain instances. I believe there is... Um, I thought there was a chest here, but maybe there isn't. What I do know for certain is that is the next dungeon right there. Ah, of course. But before we go in there, I want to go up here. and blow up the hole in the wall that we saw earlier for the, I believe that was a fairy fountain in the light world. And you go in here this time, and it gives you 300 bucks. So now we have replenished the majority of the money that we had used in the previous episode at the very end to max out my uh, consumables. And then we can go ahead and pick up an extra 80 right here. And now we're going to go right back to the mini game where the guy lets you dig in the yard and see if we can't get that extra heart piece. And then after that, we'll go ahead and get started on the next dungeon for this particular episode. Oh! Hey, boys. Bye, boys. <laughs> so I want to go up here. Let's go ahead and swap to this so I don't accidentally waste a bomb. Not that it's a big deal now that we have maxed out my uh, reserves for those bombs. Welcome to the treasure field. The object is to dig as many holes as you can in 30 seconds. Any treasures you dig up will be yours to keep. It's only 80 rupees to play, and that is way too expensive for this minigame, but that's all right. We have the cash. All right, so... Oh. There we go. Okay. 
Again, there's no guarantee you're going to find the item you're here for. I mean, obviously, you hope that you get it on the first try, but I might have to do it a couple of times to get it. And I don't think I came anywhere close to making up the money I used to play that game. Not even close. Which stinks. And I don't think those replenish. If you want to do it again, you have to leave the screen. Yeah. So we'll try it. I think one or two more times, and then if we can't get it, we'll just leave it. Again, I did say I don't think I'm going to try to get every item in this game. That's a pretty tall task, considering some of the nonsense you have to go through. Come on. made our money back this time, or really close to making our money back. Yeah, I think we did make our money back this time, plus some. All right, one more try and then we'll just move on. I could literally spend all day digging holes here, maybe not once land on it. Let me go. Oh, no, come on, turn around, dummy. Nope, nothing. All right, well, we tried. I made a tiny amount back. Well, I guess it started with 462 rupees, and I ended up with 445, so I still lost money, but not as bad as it could have been. In any case. Oh, hello. I don't think I need any more. I do not. So I'll just grab that for the health. So this will likely be a theme going forward for future dungeons, but in order to get into the second dungeon here, we do have to do a little bit of swapping back and forth between the light and dark world. If I can get to the right screen right here. I think if you try to go in here right now, you actually won't be able to do anything. Oh, come on, jerk. Oh, I guess you can. Lunk, it is I, Tsasarahola. Objects exist simultaneously in both worlds with similar shapes. If the form of a thing changes, it will affect the shape of its twin in the other world. In other words, if you can't get in here at all because there's water in this section, or not water in this section, you come back to the light world and yank on the handle to get in here or uh, to drain the water in the light world and in the dark world there will be water in that dungeon all right so let's do that let's flip over come on I think before we go any further, I'm going to go up to that fairy cave up top and uh, take full advantage of the fairy's services, which you don't pay for. Or I can save myself a trip and do this real quick. Ah, so close. Oh, do that too many times. All right, so put that there. Now, the lake is drained. Let's 
Let's go ahead and hit the Dark World. As you can see, it is also drained here now. Get rid of him. Get, 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 get. I think you can stun him too. No, you can't. Whoa, stay back. All right, fine. Whatever. Just go. And we now enter the water temple thing. I have no idea what those are supposed to be. And these are obviously the scrubbing bubbles. By the way, learn this the hard way. Make sure that you have your bathroom extremely well ventilated if you use any of those, like, bleach products that kind of spray on, because, boy, I definitely gassed myself <laughs> accidentally doing that once. Oh! Shoot. That was a lucky block. I should have taken the hit on that. I believe this is a bombable. It is. There we go. And a critical one, because I think this is a key. Oh, it's a map. All right, well, there you go. Now we have the map for this dungeon. This is a pretty big, like, one or two layer dungeon. Yeah, two layer. Oh, three layer, excuse me. I like the variety and layout between dungeons where some of them are just one or two levels, but they're really spread out. And then there's a couple that you'll, I did it again, that you'll actually go into that are very vertical. They don't have a lot of detail on each floor, but you're going up and down floors constantly in those. So that little uh, turret will only fire when you swing your weapon. And if you hold the weapon like this, it'll keep firing until you... Come on, get out of the way! Stupid. Can't push that. I believe there are levers you can pull inside the dungeon here in order to get the water level to rise like right there. this one a try. No promise this will actually do anything, but some of them do. Alright, so we need to go th this way anyway. We gotta go back down into the previous screen in order to get to the door to the left. But we'll see what this is. Nothing particularly important. don't have the big key just yet, so we won't be able to get the item. Not right away. So very important, the boomerang does not work on those guys here. However, I do think we get an item that will work on them. And I don't think the top one moves. No, it doesn't. It's the bottom one that moves. The game's kind of gating your progress by doing stuff like that. We'll put the hammer on. Maybe that works. All right, I don't think that did anything for me. I just walked in a big circle. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing there. I'm not sure what the point of that was. Oh, here we go. Oh, the compass.
Now, these don't do anything, but there are statues here that you can actually yank on the tongue for a, a hidden passage somewhere. Alright, so we want to get over here. And we do it... Nope, can't push those. Yeah, swim over them. Let's get away from that incredibly annoying sound. Get to the switch here. Whoa! Almost hit it. Can't push that statue. Not that we need to. This is an easy one to get past. Flood the room next door. And I think we can go down this way because we lowered the blue blocks. Yep. Back in the water. Taking big gulps of that dirty, dirty water. The reason Link is the hero that is destined to defeat Ganon is, of course, because he has an incredible immune system, gulping all this filthy sewage water. Whoa, whoa, I don't need the bomb. All right, where are we right now? All right, so I think... Oh, man. Oh! Oh, got through that opening. I think we can get through here this way. Yes, we can. There you go. Don't touch me. Get through! Nothing here. Alright, so... We can't do anything for that room yet, but I think we will be able to get across the gap once we get the item for this dungeon. Another very critical traversal item that we're going to pick up. say, what is that statue shooting at? I'm not there. Oh. Alright, so in order to get to the chest down below, we gotta drop through the gap here. There we go. It's just money. Kind of lame. Uh, interesting. I can get to the room over there, but in order to do so, I'm going to have to lower the red pegs. Mm, come on. All right, I'm going to have to do it this way. to get back to that area. Yoink. I'm swimming in cash. I feel like half the time when I play other Zelda games, I'm constantly in search of rupees, and this time I'm finding way more than I'll actually need. Oh, come on. Stupid, and now I'm taking hits from stupid stuff. Alright, let's get back up here. Oh, oh, I don't think the jars respawn items. No, they don't. Which is fine, we just need to get here. There we go. I believe this is the big key. 
It is. Get away from that chattering noise, the Fran Drescher of spike traps. Hey. All right. Let's go get that dungeon item. So we gotta have an order to get to the boss. Big change from every other level that has an item that you need to get to the boss, I know. Yoink. And we get the hook shot. Boing! This is the hook shot. It extends and contracts and boing! It can grapple many things. So essentially, this is now like the boomerang that you want to use for most of the rest of the game. So it lets you do things like that. And it stuns enemies just like the boomerang does. And it grabs items just like the boomerang does. So in many ways, it is an upgraded version of the boomerang that you already had and really didn't need to replace because Boomerang does a lot of cool things for you already, but whatever. That was an interesting choice on their part. I don't know if I think it was an upgrade in the sense that uh, Nintendo probably thought it was. Almost! push the statue on that. Oh, oh, owie. All right, so we have a path straight ahead and a path down. We're already down on the top floor, so let's go left because I don't think that's going to take me anywhere critical yet. So we'll find out. Get him out of the way, because that's the dangerous one. And I believe this works, the, the hook shot works on killing these things. If you hit him. If you hit him. <laughs> okay, screw it. I can't even hit them when they're in the wall. Okay, leave it. Not worth it. Alright, the tongue didn't do anything. Nope. And it's just another path down. All right, so well, let's see what we find below. Something I can't do because I got to go above and push the switch first to drain the water. So this was kind of a waste of time. Yeah, see, there you go. That time it worked. That. I was so good up to this point not hitting them when they were electrified and then I botched there. This takes me to the same spot. It does not. I can't get any of those items anyway. However, I think pushing this switch will actually activate both. I think this will actually open the door on the right as well as the left. Easy way to find out. That, whoa! Haha. Uh -huh. Gotcha. Yoink. that health back as soon as I can get it. All right, this is drain. Let's see what's down below. Mm -hmm. 
nothing critical, and I don't think there was any other stuff that we could get that way, so let's go ahead and head north. Past the scrubbing bubbles. So these little waterfalls, I think there are just one. Oh no, there are two. Okay. So one of them you can go through here. That leads up. Then there's another one to the west, and I don't know what that leads me to. Oh, I guess it's just a door. Probably just some hearts or items that I need. So, bombs. Money. Nothing critical. Now, I would argue what you're doing here makes absolutely no sense when you kill those things with a hook shot. The hook shot is presumably made of metal. Part of the reason why you're getting electrocuted when you attack them with your sword is your sword's made of metal. So how is this safer? Tell me how, game. Tell me how. Ah, damn it. And I got hit again. I want what's in here. Whee! There we go. Probably just hearts. Oh no, bombs. There we go. Some hearts. Not really going to be all that useful in this area, I don't think, because this one requires that I use the hookshot, which we're going to go ahead and put on real quick. And here's the boss. I think you can grab them while they're spinning, too. Yes, you can. remember if he does anything different before you take all of them off. You would think a creature that is just plagued with little puffball parasites would be happy that I'm clearing them off of them, but of course he's not. Oh, I missed! Ouch. All right. And I don't think this helps you in any way. I think you just have to hit him. Thankfully, his pattern is pretty easy to predict. There you go. Second boss dead. You like that and catch the gem mid fall. Lunk, because of you, I can escape from the clutches of the evil monsters. Thank you. The Triforce will grant the wishes of whoever touches it, as long as that person lives. That is why it was hidden in the Golden Land. Only select few know of its location. But at some point, that knowledge was lost. The person who rediscovered the Golden Land was Ganondorf, the evil thief. Luckily, he couldn't figure out how to return to the Light World. Well... Remember that you have magical powers, which only the hero can make the most of. There are other magical warping points like the one you saw on Death Mountain. By using them, you can go between the two worlds and find the evils hidden in the Dark World. You are the only one who can destroy Ganondorf. The Thief. No. Ganon. The evil King of Darkness. 
Do you understand? Now repeat yourself. May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. And spin move! Alright, so we finished the second dungeon. And what that will allow us to do, since we now have a hook shot, is we can use that to get across a couple of areas in both the light and dark world that you had to have a hookshot to cross, uh, cross a gap. I think first thing we're going to do is, since we have a, a, a glut of cash, we're going to go ahead and spend a little bit of it over here on that minigame to try to pick up that heart piece. Come on. of concerted attempts and then we'll just bail on this forever. I know it's not necessarily intended for you to make your money back every time, but I think I did just last time there. Definitely made it back this time. And then some. Nothing. They really don't want me to get this heart piece. Do it. Oh, don't take the fence, stupid. I'm not 100% on this, but I don't think you can dig underneath the plants or the skulls. I guess the easy way to find out would be to pick one up, and the game's not letting me. Nope, sure can't. So I lost money that time. Come on, game. It's such a simple thing. I just want a heart piece. And I know you have it. So give it to me. back again. Alright, one more try, and then if I can't do it, we're just going to move on. I would like to get some other items here before we call it an episode. We have about uh, 10 minutes left. Alright, last try. We got it. 
Now the rest is just digging for cash. All right, well, we got the heart piece and we ended up, I think, making a tiny bit of profit from those games. Well, let's go back up to the village and see if there's any things, or I guess what would have been the village, see if there's any things that we can do. Oh, I might not even be able to go that far yet. Actually, yeah, we have to finish, I think, the third dungeon before you can get to the Dark World version of the dungeon. That makes sense, because, of course, we wouldn't be able to get the critical item that is in that Dark World version of Kakariku, because we have to... Yeah, see, it's, it stuns enemies just like the Boomerang does. Uh, there is... I think the first opportunity to do the sword upgrade in the Dark World version of uh, Kakariku. So obviously you can't do that yet. I have no idea what this is. Oh, just fairies. All right, sorry, I had to step away for a second there. So, ow! Go, 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 go. Alright, so what we want to do... Go this way. I don't think we can get the bomb yet. I know you have to beat a certain number of dungeons to get to the really big bomb that he has. Yeah, he doesn't sell it yet. Once you do have the option, you take it back to the ziggurat and blow open a dungeon or like a cave. And I believe that's where you can do some of your final upgrades in the entire game. So we're a little bit early for that. All right, so I want to go up here. Is it here? I might have gone too far. Or maybe I haven't. Maybe it is here. All right, well, we'll try this. I think you use the hook shot here. Yes, you do, to get across. There we go. I don't think there was anything down here. We'll go ahead and do a quick check. Yeah! This way. So the... Ow! Hookshot doesn't stun or damage him, unfortunately. I think there's a pit right here. No, there isn't. It might have been the light world that had a pit there. Alright, so there's definitely some stuff here. Just gotta figure out how you get to it. I think it's just straight this way. Ow. Ah, these guys suck. I don't think that does anything for you. It gives you some money, but... You come back here in the light world... And you can push this out of the way, right? Or run into it. it if you can stay alive... Get out of here. There we go. And... The cape! This is the magic cape. You are invisible when you wear it. Watch your magic meter. So that's going to be pretty critical for a couple of item pickups, and I think they are heart pieces. Back to the Dark World. And then you want to go right here. And use the mirror again. So you can go in here. Gee, I wonder what I'm supposed to do with all the as these extra bombs that I keep picking up. Yeah, 
turning into a character from Star Fox. Heart piece! And now I get a full heart. Sweet. I got all my health back, too. So that was good timing. Back to the dark world! Oh, I got stuck in the wall! Alright, so we have to be clear when we teleport back, or else the game will force you back to wherever you came from. There we go. Another bomb to replenish. Whoa! Oh. I'm gonna get him. Except I can't move while I'm holding that. I think this is just the thief cave, and uh, he might just tell you some stuff for money. The answer is yes, it probably is. We'll give him the cash, why not? Tell you the truth, I found incredible beauty inside the pyramid, but someone sealed the door. Can't do anything with a standard bomb, they say, so again, that's why you need that big bomb from the little dragon salesman. <laughs> Damn, this guy's hit so hard. Really need that tunic upgrade as soon as we can get it. I always thought that was telling you there's an item directly to the southeast. But I could never figure out where exactly it was supposed to be, because this does look like an arrow pointing southeast, right? Health? Good, good. Yoink. There are two more items that we want to grab up here, and then I think we'll call it an episode. Get out of here. Nope. Nope. So the first thing we want to do is we want to come back to the hut where these two lumberjacks were cutting at the tree. The Goober Brothers. Okay, B. Of course. All right, screw it. Stay there. At least you're not stinging me. So now the brothers are gone, you can see that the tree looks a little bit different than the other ones. Ram it. It disappears. You fall inside. And I don't think there's... Yeah, there's some fairies there, but you don't need that necessarily what you really want is what's in here the heart piece it's the one that we couldn't get before because it was up on the ledge now the lumberjacks have given up for the day or maybe forever who knows they run into one weird tree and they decide they they can't do any more lumberjacking in the rest of the game jacking lumber Flip back to the light world again. I believe there is something we can do this way. You can see the heart piece up there. Uh -huh. You tried, but you didn't get me. So we gotta go up here. A bling. Ah, I couldn't get him to fall into the pit on his own. You'd go up here. Obviously, this gap would be uncrossable without that. And then you get this. Well, how do you get past that? Because it's blocking the entire tunnel. Easy. You just do this. So the magic cape doesn't just turn you invisible, it turns you intangible. And now I got the heart piece. All right, I think that's going to do it on this one. Let's get clear so I can stop playing f for a couple seconds. Well, there really is no good spot you can do it. Well, that is the hut up here? I'll go in the hut if I can. The hut is here. All right, let's see what was inside the hut first. 
just another shop. All right, this is a good stopping spot. All right, so uh, we we did a lot of good stuff in this particular episode. We uh, picked up some more heart pieces. We finished the second dungeon, the water whatever. Uh, and then we got the hookshot and the magic cape, which will come mostly in use when we start going into some of the caves that you have to be able to turn intangible to get through some objects, but it's not a critical item. This is very much an optional one because all it really use, uh, all its uses are tied to picking up other optional items like heart pieces. So it was a nice pickup. We don't have to have it to complete the game, but it, it will be helpful going forward for a couple of things. So that's going to do it for episode five of my Link to the Plat. Uh, I keep saying that wrong. Link to the Past long play. There's too many L's in the <laughs> phrase. As always, I do appreciate each of you watching, and I will see you next time.